I'm going to give you the traditional introduction to confidential computing, just to, to set the scene and get everyone on the same page. And while I'm, while I'm doing this, I will also be introducing uh, some of today's talks. So the, the core question that confidential computing is addressing is how to process data securely on someone else's computer. Consider, for example, the cloud, which is, of course, someone else's computer. And if you're processing your data on the cloud, you're effectively giving your data in plain text to the cloud provider. And, well, everything may go the right way, but there may also, of course, be threats in the infrastructure, malicious insiders, hackers, things like that. You just don't know. And confidential computing gives you a highly secure, isolated, runtime encrypted, and a tested execution environment, sort of your own private bubble on that third-party infrastructure where you can process your data in private if implemented correctly. Runtime encryption is what most people associate with confidential computing, but attestation is also very important. So how does this work? I mean, it sounds like magic, right? Um, but of course, it, it isn't, and it's a hardware-based technology. And they are essentially two foundations. They are secure enclaves, and this was the first form of confidential computing that was out there in the market. In secure enclaves, an application can ask the CPU to isolate it from the infrastructure, like from the operating system, from the hypervisor, and so forth. And what the CPU will then do is, it will, it will isolate the application on a logical level, and it will go and encrypt the application's code and data in memory. And from the outside, it will look as if the CPU was processing only on encrypted data. And, as I mentioned before, there's remote attestation, and the CPU will provide a certificate that proves the authenticity and integrity of everything that's running inside the enclave. And then you can go and share your data securely with that enclave. See, QR enclaves only exist on Intel hardware, and they have been existing since 10 years, I believe, roughly. And this concept is still alive and kicking, but it has also evolved a bit into what is the, the second hardware foundation, which is called confidential VMs. And confidential VMs are essentially taking the secure enclave concept and extending that to virtual machines. Same thing, just more software inside the green box, and this makes life a bit easier for dev developers. And you can essentially lift and shift workloads with confidential VMs, which is more complicated with, with Intel SGX. Confidential VMs are also more prevalent, so they are available in AMD hardware, in Intel hardware, and going forward also in ARM-based server CPUs. So that's the most recent entry in the confidential VM space. And I'm pleased to share that we have a talk on that from ARM on the latest developments of ARM CCA. Very much looking forward to that one. Also a recent development is confidential accelerators. So NVIDIA started adding confidential computing features to the H100 AI accelerators. And that's super exciting because now for the first time we can run AI workloads with confidential computing guarantees. This opens up quite a few new applications, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. On the technic, technical level, we have a talk by Intel where they are describing how to set up the secure channel between the confidential VM and the AI accelerator. So now that we have the foundations out of the way, let's talk about use cases. There are, of course, many use cases, and I think one can roughly categorize them into two categories. The first one is very simple. It is about protection against infrastructure or service providers. Essentially what I showed just a couple of slides ago, protecting your workload against the cloud, for example. And we have one talk today by Microsoft directly from the trenches where they are explaining how they're protecting a large scale credit card payment system with confidential computing. Very exciting stuff. Another talk we have is from one of the largest hospitals in Germany, and they are detailing how they are using confidential computing in their cloud migration journey. And of course, hospitals are dealing with very sensitive data, 
and confident computing is a great fit for that. The second class of use cases are secure multi-party applications. This is a more intricate class, and in essence, confident identical computing allows you to create what is called a data clean room, where multiple parties can securely share and pool data without actually revealing the data to each other. Pretty cool stuff, and we have one very interesting talk today by an NGO called, Ho called Hope for Justice, where they are explaining how they're using this clean room pattern to share data with other NGOs in order to combat human trafficking and modern slavery. All right. A common question I get asked is, okay, this confidential computing is great. How do I apply it? Can I just put everything into a confidential VM? And the answer here is, most of the time, no. The reason is, if you're just putting parts of your application, or maybe all parts of your application, into confidential VMs, if you have more parts, for example, like a database or app logic, then you only get point protection for those parts. But a lot of a large attack service remains where attackers coming from the infrastructure can, for example, duplicate nodes, restart nodes, downgrade nodes, or maybe even add nodes that are not supposed to be talking to your, to your nodes. And you, you don't really know unless you implement attestation end-to-end -end and encryption end-to-end -end so that you get one coherent confidential computing context. And we have one talk today by Intel that is going into that direction. And here I'd like to make an announcement from Azure Systems. We are also launching a new product in this area called Contrast. And Contrast is an orchestration framework for confidential containers that can, for example, run on Azure AKS. And that provides end-to-end -end attestation and end-to-end -end encryption for confidential container-based workloads. And you can learn more about that in a session later today. Now, last question for today. What will finally bring confidential computing mainstream? And I have been in this space for like 10 years now. It's a false OC3, but I think it's fair to say that it's not yet quite mainstream. And the reason is, I think we need a killer app. And there are two killer apps really on the horizon. One is regulation, and the other one is AI. Regulation, of course, is always driving adoption of security. And there's something coming up in the EU called DORA that is mandating runtime encryption for a wide array of applications in the financial sector. Maybe more exciting is AI. So we have a keynote today by Phil Venables, the CIS of Google Cloud. And in this, he will detail how confidential computing makes AI better and enables new exciting applications. To complement this, we have a very exciting panel with Mark Papermaster, Greg Lavender, Mark Rosinovich, and Ian Buck, where we discuss the current state and the potential of confidential AI. And spoiler alert, the potential is huge. We also have an array of, of other technical talks around AI, where we will learn about very interesting new developments and applications. And I'd like to close this session with a second product announcement from Azure Systems. We are announcing Continuum AI, which is a framework for the creation of AI SaaS services, where user prompts and model whites are protected at all times against both the infrastructure and the service provider. Imagine ChatGPT, where you don't have to trust Azure and also not OpenAI. This is coming later this year as open source, and we are currently in a, in a closed close beta in a preview. And there will be more details in the session later today. Thank you very much for, for joining, and have a great OC3.